Hi everybody, welcome to Big Oggy World. Welcome back to Kelly's Kitchen on Big Oggy World. And welcome to Christmas. I can say that officially now because today is actually December the 1st. We are filming this yes. on December the 1st. Yeah, you're on your party dress already. Well, it's Seems not like exactly it. a party dress, but yeah, I did wear it a couple of Christmases ago. There you go. Uh, I'm not because I've just basically been to the shops to get the odds and ends we needed yeah. for this recipe. I thought I'd wear this to drive you nuts because surely when the sun comes through all my little sequins are going to spoil. Yeah, we've got, we've got low sun mad. issues again and it's already causing me issues with filming. It's what happens around here. So today we are going to do something very traditional. Um, is, is, there's two reasons for doing this. One is because we lived in Ireland. We did. And we love Irish food and Irish cooking and all the Irish culture. And the kids were born in Ireland. And the kids were born in Ireland too. Um, the other reason is, the other tradition is because we're clearing out the freezer. Yes. Because it's December the 1st, as I just said, the next two weeks our house is basically, let's eat out the freezer, let's clear anything out the freezer because we need the space for Christmas. Absolutely. For all that, all those big slabs of meat and cheese and cream and all that stuff you get I mean, for the fridge and the freezer. And yeah, so we are doing, what are we doing? We are doing a traditional Irish stew. Yeah, now we are using kind of the recipe from the Ballymaloe Cookery School. Kind of. Yeah, Darina Allen and um, what's her? Rachel Allen. Rachel Allen, that's her uh, daughter-in-law. Yeah. They literally do the same recipe. I think the daughter stole it off her mother and put mother-in-law and put it in the, the uh, her book. Books. Yeah, so we're using that one because that's, to me, that's the basic Irish stew. Yeah. Um, you, we've looked at lots of various other recipes and you, it's a stew, so you can add in anything you like, really. People have added cabbage, leeks, loads yeah, of things, but we are doing fancy. the basic. We're doing basic and it's not a traditional Christmas recipe. No, but, but it is a kind of getting rid of stuff. It is a winter recipe. It's a winter recipe. And, yeah. you know, weather is bad now and this is stuff that sticks to your bones and makes you feel warm. Hopefully. So, the reason it's taken us so long to do this is because actually... Irish stew is not a cheap stew to me. No, we've been saving up bits of lamb. Yes, yeah. which is why we said about clearing out the freezer, because lamb is expensive. It is. And in the actual recipe, they want lamb chops, which are even more, more expensive. expensive. Yeah. Um, and they want three pounds of them as well. So yeah, it's not like, yeah. So yeah. we've been getting Look, Looking up yellow stickers. Yeah. Yellow stickers, wherever yeah. I could find yellow stickers in the last probably six or seven weeks, or maybe more, it's a freezer. Yeah. Um, and we've now got enough. Right, so we've got some neck fillet, we've yep. got some neck joints with bone in, which we're going to use because bone gives extra flavour. So yep. I'm going to put that in the bottom because obviously the bones will keep the heat from the very bottom. Um, and then we actually have a butterfly shoulder. I know, we've got a butterfly shoulder from M&S, actually. That was on um, yeah, Which was on sticker. super duper offer. So yeah. I grabbed it and I said, that's a large chunk of lamb, really. So we've taken all the fancy stuff off it. We've also got some stewing lamb. I think there's just bits of everything yeah, it's, in it's just bits and pieces. So this is our lamb. Yeah. The ingredients, we will write an ingredient list for you, which is printed off the menu, off the recipes and things, yeah. which we'll put in the description below. But this is the stew. We've got more meat than we need. We've got more potatoes than we've right. kind of upped our actual ingredients because for the we stew. Need to serve, we want to feed our family, obviously. And actually, when our stew pot comes out... Yeah, yeah. There, there's a joke. I'm going to put it on Instagram. I've actually put it on Instagram already uh, by the time this goes out. That when that stew pot comes out, we know, you know what we're going to eat for the next three days. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's that. Um, the other thing that is going to be different than the recipe that you will see that John will put below is because we are using predominantly stewing lamb, yep. not lamb chops, we are going to do this as a low and slow, not what Miss Darina Allen does. Yeah. So obviously. Again, we just got to cook it longer till it cooks. Exactly. That's the important thing. So um, we're going to do it in the oven the same as she suggests, but we are going to do it a lot lower and a lot slower. Yeah, treat it like any kind of stew recipe. You put in all your stuff together yeah. and then you cook it to death until it's ready. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's get going. Okay. So the first thing to do is to get a pan and sear your meat. I'm glad that wasn't on when you did that. I just, I just wanted to turn that off. Right, yeah. So you get your pan and you and sear your meat And we're going to sear off. our meat. Right, darling. So today we're using the main hob so we don't have a big induction. Pot. No. So, what we're doing first, we're just tearing off the meat. Yeah, tearing off the meat. So what I've done, this is the actual piece of shoulder that we had. 
which has got a little bit of fat on it. Yeah, shoulder's fatty. So um, I put that in first to try and get a little bit of something going. I will say, um, you know, I love lamb. And you can, at the moment, I did see them saying just today, they've got half price legs on lamb. Right yeah. Now, which is very good. Like 12 quid for an actual leg. Uh, which is bargain, really, yeah, it is. It about it. Um, but I do love shoulder. So shoulder to me is, is proper lamb, a little bit fattier. Yeah. You kind of have to cut it in chunks. Works for me. So this is why I probably like Irish stew, you know? You're, you're a lamb chop fan, aren't you? Oh, I love lamb chop. I love lamb. Lamb is probably one of my favourite meats. Um, but I think it's because I love it with somewhere and got like Sunday lunch. And it was lamb, I would have lamb without yeah. without the choice of lamb, you'd have yeah. it. But yeah. you don't eat a lot, so like one lamb chop is perfect for you, you can just nibble that bit and it's kind of done. Me, I like it a bit more a bit more substantial, as we always say, and look at that. So we're gonna just burn all this off and we'll come back. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see my pan is really hot. But I'm gonna deglaze it a bit. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of fat on the uh, meat, which you kind of expected. Oh, and that out the window, love. Yep. Uh, we put the chops in with the bones already in. Woo! Woo! I'm going to pour that straight yep. in. Well, already in the bottom of the uh, pot. Right, so what are you doing now, love? Well, basically, I just deglazed the pan, so there's not really anything left in it, but I am just going to whip the carrots right in it a little bit. The idea is, if you've got fat, that you kind of shush all your uh, vegetables in, in the fat. But as we don't have a lot of fat. Well, that's the thing. If you use chops, you would probably add yeah, more fat. Yeah, you render it down slowly and you, you don't get some, but there's not actually a lot of meat, a lot of fat even on the bone stuff that we've got. So. No, and what you could do, if you really want to, you could probably ask your butcher for some fat. Yeah, a little bit of spare fat if you use your butcher. Hello. Right, so the even next a, Even thing. a bit of breast of lamb might be good just to get a bit, render a bit of fat off. Yeah, to get, yeah but I've opened the window, love. Good, well done. Right, so the next thing now is we layer it up. Okay. So all you do is you put a layer of meat, a few carrots, a few a onions. Of meat, carrots, onions. We're using baby onions. Yeah, it asks for baby onions. Yep. So we managed to get some baby onions. Um, if you can't get baby onions, you can just use normal onions, but cut them quite chunky. Cut Don't chunky. slice them finely. So I would say like a normal onion, cut it into four, maybe. Four, say quarter, maybe, yeah. Um, Try and leave them so they stay in quarters, not in pieces. Exactly. And the carrots, again, make them chunky. Yep. So I'm going to start layering my pan. I'm going to put a few carrots, uh, not carrots, onions in the bottom. Yeah, you say layer, but it's a kind of, it's just quite a, tricky. Yeah, it's a case of like just putting things in really. Chuck some carrots in. Yeah, you're not like you're making a lasagna, you're just going to crack yeah, it's not going to be a little bit. Like that. I guess the thing is, is you sort of want your vegetables in amongst your meat. That's the basis of it, so that you've got the taste. Yeah, so that all the meat juices combine with all the veg. Exactly. So, each layer you need to put a little bit of seasoning. Don't obviously go over the top with the salt, because you don't want it to be... Too much, but salt and pepper. Yeah. Yep. And then... Some more so this is the rest of our meat that's already been done, as you can see. I'm directing about three layers in here, maybe. Maybe. Because in the end, you you put the potatoes in on top. The potatoes sit right on the top. Okay. And they probably won't even be in liquid. No, we think the idea is they steam. They steam in the juice from the juices that are below. And the reason that happens is because the potatoes that they use in Ireland are predominantly floury potatoes, floury ones, yeah. whereas we tend to use waxy potatoes. Yep. So if your potatoes are floury and you cook them too long, they will literally go to flat, to pap. There will be nothing left. They, they explode, they if do. I remember rightly. Yeah. I was taught the first time I went into Super Valley, well-known uh, supermarket group in Ireland, I was asking for potatoes and he said, oh, you're English, oh, you won't get the potatoes you want here. Yeah, we don't do waxy ones. And he had to tell me how to cook them. Yeah, you kind of partly boil normal ones and then you take all the water out and you leave them in the steam. Otherwise they just collapse. And they cook them in their skins as in well. In the skins as well, them yeah. Together. So, there we 
there are our lamb bits. Pour the juice yeah, in. Pour all the juice in, anything you've got. Anything to add a bit of extra flavour. Yeah, and never be squeamish about meat. You do know that it's not actually blood that comes out of meat when you've had it from the butchers. Just looks red. It's not actually blood at all. The last few carrots in. Okay. So as okay. you can it's see, it's not actually layered per se. But it's kind of. But it's it is sort of just a wholesome, yeah. easy to make. Into that, really, really. Yep. we're going to pour stock. Okay. Now, the recipe says 600 mils, which is a pint. I've got a bit more than that. We've got more in here. We've actually just re-upped the amount of meat, etc. in here. So again, and actually, I'm going to have to. I'm going to put a bit more in again okay. because I want it to almost cover my meat. Yeah, you want to cover your meat in the main part of your veg. Exactly. Okay. So I'm just going to make a little bit more stock. One second. Okay, so I've made another pint of stock and I'm just going to add that. Um, I'm using lamb stock, just from a stock cube, that's perfect. Perfect, yeah. Um, and I've added an extra cube because you want it to be a bit tasty. Yeah, true. You never know what we do meat, whether it's going to be tasty or not. So, so I'm going to put a little bit more salt on and then I'm going to put my potatoes on. So you just place them in on the top. Some of them obviously are going to get a bit wet, but that's all right. Like I said, we're using waxy potatoes, so it's not such a problem for us because they will hold their shape. Whereas if you've got a floury potato, like a Mary's Piper or a King Edward's even, it's possible that they will just go to... Yeah, we're using Vivaldi's. We are using Vivaldi's. Just out of interest if you, if you go to the supermarket. I um, do love the Vivaldi's. We do. We love Maris Pipers for roast. In fact, we're going to do. We're doing a roast um, potato video for you to show how we do our Christmas yeah, potatoes. Yeah, it's, it's a get ahead recipe, the roast potato one. So that'll be out very soon. We've tried it, and it's perfect. So you can put as many or as few potatoes in as you like. Obviously, we've got a couple of teenagers to. Feed. One of them has got completely hollow legs. Right, so add a sprig of thyme on the top okay. and bring to the boil on the stove before you put it into the oven. Obviously that way it's hot before it even goes in the oven. Now, because we're using stewing lamb, we are putting it in the oven at 140 fan and I'm going to leave it three, four hours and check it probably after three. Yeah. But this is not going to be a quick cook and I'm not in any rush for it, it's for tea. So I'm just going to treat it gently and let it just do its thing. If you try to cook it quick, you'll just get stringy, tough meat and you want sort of the flavors to Yeah, develop. if you're using the chops, they're kind of saying slightly higher, about a 160, 180, 180. they're 180. saying, 180 fan if you're using chops for okay. about an hour, hour and a hour half. half. Yeah, which would probably work, it would work for chops, the yeah. idea is the meat is, you can fork it off the bone, yeah. the idea, um, we've only got bones of on. Absolutely, and they've also said that if you are buying chops, they need to be a minimum of one inch, I believe. Yeah, we're talking chair. chunky chops here, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. no yeah. less than one inch thick, otherwise Again, it's just a little just full. The whole thing about an Irish stew compared to quite a lot of stews that we have in England is that the, the pieces are much larger. You yeah. can see everything you're about to eat and it's just big chunks. Yeah. It's, kind of, it's a white stew, I believe, is what they yes, call it. Yes, it is. Now, once it's cooked in the oven, this is the bit that gets a bit, not confusing, but it's a bit different. Once it's been cooked in the oven, you tip out the liquid into a pan and then you add a roux or some corn flour or some a thickening agent to it and you have you add parsley chopped parsley and chopped thyme make it into a thicker juice slightly sauce. thicker it's not yeah. massively thicker and then add it back so i'm going to see how ours goes and we'll see if we need to thicken it or if it's thickened up also partly to do with that is you you can take off some of the fat from the juice so yeah. it's not all sitting in fat really. exactly. it is lamb after all absolutely but we've had no fat so 
We're not going to have a problem hole. with that. Okay. So, We're going to boil and then come yeah. back. Okay, so as you can see, we are boiling yeah. gently. So what I'm going to do now is put a piece of foil over the top, just to help a little bit with retaining the steam. Steams, if you notice that our lid has holes in it, which kind of was to keep the object of steaming it then. There we go. And now I'm going to put it into the oven at 140. I'm going to check it after two hours to see how we're going. Um, but it'll probably take longer. But we're in no rush, so we're going to take Yeah, we're, we're right. saying four hours, because quite frankly, we're not going to need it for about six. Exactly. So, but we'll check it after two and then three and then we'll we'll, see how it's we done go. when it's done. Okay, so what I've done is the actual casserole or stew, Irish stew, it took just over two hours in our oven. I checked it after two hours and the meat was perfect. It was falling apart, the potatoes were done lovely. So what I did is I left it in the oven until now, it's still hot. I've now taken out the potatoes and the actual meat and vegetables. And what we're gonna do now is thicken the sauce slightly. So, as you can see, it's got all bits in from the cooking. It's quite a thin, it's quite a thin liquor, I guess, is the best It is. It's, it. it's basically, it's lamb stock. It's lamb stock. It's lamb stock. Yeah. So, there's not a lot of fat on it, so I didn't need to skim it. That's but, another reason why they separate it, to skim extra fat yeah. off. Yeah. So, obviously, if your lamb was fattier, you may need to skim some of the fat off. So, there are a couple of ways that you can thicken this. One is using a traditional roux. So you make up a roux and then you drop bits in and whisk it in until it thickens. Or the alternative is this way with corn flour. So this is corn flour and water. You have to mix it with water first. Otherwise, if you pour corn flour directly into hot liquid, it will just go lumpy. So if you mix it with cold water and add a little bit at a time, that's what my mother used to do wrong then. That's why I used to get gravy with lumps of white flour in it. Yeah. Whisk it. And as it comes up to the boil, it will thicken. Um, it doesn't have to be a thick gravy no, or anything. It doesn't it's need literally to be. just adding a little dimension to the stock. And I can't tell you, you know, off my head how much to add because it's going to vary with you know, how much evaporation you've had or it's, whatever it's to look you're and using. Taste, really. So I'm just going to keep adding bits until I'm happy with the consistency. And then um, we'll plate up and have a Anything little bit Anything else you need to do? Did you want to freshen the stuff yeah, up once, or anything? Once you've um, thickened it to your liking, you then add about two tablespoons of herbs. And it's a mixture of chives and parsley. Parsley. Okay, so, so just to freshen it up because there were there's already time and things in the exactly. stock. Exactly. Okay, so we're going to let you finish that, and then would you normally put all the veg back in, or would you you're going to uh, do it? No, separately? I'm not going to. I'm going to put it into plates so I can see what everybody's got, Fair rather enough. than digging around and breaking things up. If you have it as we've got it, um, you can pick pieces out without things being broken up and ending up yeah. with a, a it's mush all, in the it's bottom. Also, if you kind of transfer it all into a big casserole like that, you would just serve it at the table. Exactly. Straight for that. Yeah. yeah. This, this is wholesome family food. This is not pretty food. No. This is not m &S. No. This is oggy. <laughs> this is oggy house. Okay, so, um, don't you do a taste for this? We know it's going to be good. We know what an Irish do tastes like. I will play a picture up so that you can see. We'll do a picture of it and obviously we do that for the thumbnail. Anything else to say today, darling? No, I don't think so. I think, like I said, I mean, it's a brilliant cook for all the family. Our kids are going to love it. Um, you can, my daughter will add mint sauce to it because whenever there's lamb around, she likes, you know, lashes mint sauce over Keeps it. So own. she's going to do that. Um, all I would say is lamb is quite expensive. So look out for your yellow stickers and things like that or bargains and um, save it up and use it when you've got enough. Okay, so please subscribe, please hit the notification bar, do all those things as usual. Come and join myself and Kelly on Big Aussie World and me on Big Aussie Golf. And we'll see you tomorrow for another Christmas list video. Bye, Bye for everybody. Now.